the journal has a piece. Uh, here's the states, uh, doctor. California, Utah, Arizona, North Carolina, Florida, Arkansas, and Texas have all logged rises in confirmed cases. You see, you see the data as much as anyone. Is it risen to the level of where you're going, wow, this is really a problem, or is it about where we were last time we spoke in terms of, of a red flag? Well, there's persistent spread. I mean, we have about 20,000 cases a day, and it's not going down. It is about 20,000 cases a day. If you go to RT.live, which shows which states are expanding their epidemics and where it's coming down, there's about 15 states now where the epidemic seems to be expanding. North Carolina, South Carolina, Arizona seems to have a, a large epidemic underway. Tennessee, um, Idaho, Kentucky, uh, Georgia, Florida seems to be expanding as well. So it, th the number of states changes and the individual states changes. But the point is that we still have an epidemic that's very slowly expanding in this country. And we have this, again, slow burn where we have 20,000 cases a day. We may not get it appreciably below that level all through the summer. And that would be a challenge heading into the fall. Um, I don't think that we're going to have an out-of-control epidemic in June, July, and August. But I don't think we're going to crush this epidemic. The only region in the country that really has gotten their reproduction rate down very low, if you look at RT.live, is New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. They really have crushed the epidemic. Right now, New York has fewer hospitalizations on a daily basis than the Texas Medical Center in Houston. So the entire city of New York is less than Texas Medical Center. So, you know, this region is doing better, but we paid a heavy price for it. Becky. Hey, Scott, I, I did see an article uh, over the weekend that said the Banner Hospital, which I guess is the largest healthcare uh, system in Arizona, said that their ICU beds were reaching 100 percent capacity. That, that's where it starts to get concerning, right? Just if the idea is that it overwhelms the, the hospital systems p p potentially. How concerned should we be about that, st or that story in particular? Yeah, pretty concerned. And there's other states where you see capacity rising. It's also rising in parts of Texas as well. Arizona does seem to have a large outbreak underway right now, and that's been building for a couple of weeks already. Uh, so that state is probably one of the states that's at the top of the list in terms of, um, you know, an outbreak right now and a reproduction number going up. There's other states that look pretty hot. Uh, Wisconsin's also on that list. Ohio looks, looks like it's building. Minnesota has been building. Um, this doesn't mean that we're going to have another epidemic. I think that the states are going to sort of shift around over the course of the summer, which states are hot, which states are cooling down. But my concern is that we don't really get below a very persistent and rather high level of infection across the country. All right, doctor. Um, latest on, uh, I've seen articles on China. They'd like to, I guess they got five of the leading vaccine candidates right now. Uh, is it... What's I mean, we all want a vaccine, obviously. Is that the motivation is to save the world and, and be able to say we save the world? They, they, is it a, uh, a venture for a for profit venture? What I guess everyone's trying. We're all uh, are rushing towards it. Who's going to win? Well, look, as far as the, the sort of profitability of these vaccines, I suspect this market's going to be a lot like the flu vaccine, where this becomes a seasonal vaccine. And, this, and it's a good recurring revenue business, but not a, not a hugely high margin business. I think this first go around vaccine, this, these first generation vaccines, aren't going to be the vaccines we ultimately settle into. We're trying to get something to the market um, quickly here. The U.S. should win. I mean, we're far ahead with technologically advanced vaccines that are going to provide more protection than what the Chinese are working on. But the Chinese are working on inactivated virus vaccines, which are, is very old technology. It might be a simpler route to market for them. So they might get a partially protective vaccine to the market perhaps a little more quickly than us. But their vaccines are, like, are, are unlikely to be as efficacious as ours that are built on these viral vector platforms and the mRNA platforms. I think their gamble is that they want to just get shots in arms as quickly as possible and probably feel a partially protected vaccine in time for the fall could help prevent the, the, the economic damage they saw during the first go around. That said, we probably still should be able to get our vaccines onto the market late 2020, early, probably early 2021 here in the U.S. if things go well. But as you know, Joe, um, in this business, sometimes you have hiccups, so we have to account for that.